Hello everybody, welcome to the algorithm course. In this video, I'm going to discuss the exponential search process. There are four steps to follow in general. First, we have to make sure that a one indexed array of n elements is already sorted. One indexed here means that the index starts with one. Number two, we have to find out the value of i, which is at least zero, such that the target should lie on the interval with indices two to the power of i, and 2 to the power of i plus 1 minus 1. That is the window we have to determine by finding out an appropriate value of i. Number 3. If n is smaller than 2 to the power of i plus 1 minus 1, then we use the interval to be between 2 to the power of i and n. Finally, we do the binary search process on the chosen interval. Now, let us see how we find out the value of i. Number one, if the target is smaller than the first element, or the target is larger than the last element, which is indicated by index n, then we say that the target cannot be found. Number two, if it is not the case, we have to find out the value of i, so we start with i equals zero. Number three, while the target is larger than the array element corresponding to the index two to the power of i plus 1 minus 1, then we increment i. That means we add i by 1. Number 4, if the target is smaller than or equal to the array element corresponding to index 2 to the power of i plus 1 and then minus 1, we are able to do the binary search on the interval uh, shown on the slide, which corresponds to array element with index 2 to the power of i, and the ending element is having an index of 2 to the power of i plus 1 minus 1. Now, let us see an example. Suppose I want to do exponential search on these numbers, and these numbers are already sorted, and the number to search for is 31. First, we can see that the first element in the array is smaller than or equal to the target. The first element is 3, and the target is 31. Also, we can see that the final element, which is 45, is actually larger than or equal to the target, which is 31. So we can expect that the target is likely to be in the array. Then we can find out the value of i. First, we start with i equals 0. And then we see that the array element of index 2 to the power of 0 is actually array 1, which is equal to 3. And then we check another index, which is i to the power of i plus 1 minus 1. Since i is 0, this particular index is actually equal to 1. So both numbers are equal to 3. We can see that both the numbers are smaller than the target, which is 31. That means we can increment i to check for another interval. Now we choose i to be 1, because i equals 1, the left hand side of the interval is equal to index number 2, which corresponds to the value of 5. And the rightmost element of that interval is equal to array of 3, which is equal to 9. We can see that both 5 and 9 are smaller than the target. That means that particular interval isn't able to contain our target. In this case, we increment the value of i. Now we choose i equals 2. 2 to the power of i becomes 4, so the fourth element in the array is equal to 11, while the seventh element of the array is equal to 22. Now we also see that both numbers, which are 11 and 22, are smaller than our target, which is 31. That means this particular interval isn't able to contain our target. That means we have to increment i. Now i becomes 3, and we have to check whether the interval corresponding to those two indices can contain the target. The leftmost element in that portion is equal to 27, which corresponds to the eighth element of the array. And when we use the given formula to find out the rightmost element, we find that this corresponds to uh, index 15, which is not really present in our given array. So the 15th element of the array is undefined. Since the array element doesn't exist, 
we have to just use the value of n as our uh, right hand value. So array of n corresponds to array of 13. That means the 13th element of the array, which is just 35. Since we already know that the two numbers can really contain the target, the interval is already determined. Then we can do the binary search on that particular interval to find out the target. Why am I so confident? Because the left hand element is smaller than the target. And also the rightmost element, which is 45, is larger than the target, which is 31. Now we pick up that particular interval to do the binary search for the target, which is 31. First, we have to set up the low and high indices. The low index corresponds to the left hand element, and the high index corresponds to the rightmost element. Since the low index is smaller than or equal to the high index, I can find out the mid index according to the formula shown here. Then I'm able to find that the mid index is equal to 10. So index number 10 corresponds to 32. Now we know that the value of the mid element is actually larger than the target. That means we have to choose the first half to do the further division. Now because we want to pick up the left hand portion, we have to update the value of high index to mid minus 1. So now high index becomes 9. Now the new portion only has two elements. Since we know that the low index is still smaller than or equal to the high index, I can still use the formula to find out the mid element, which corresponds to element 8, which is 27. The mid element is 27, and we can see that the target is larger than or equal to the uh, mid element. In this case, we have no way but to choose the second half of the particular portion we are concerned about now. Now we update the low index to mid plus 1. So now the low index becomes 9, which is actually equal to the high index. Now we have only one element left to consider. Since the low index is actually equal to the high index, I can use the formula again to find out the mid index, which is actually equal to 9. Now we see that the middle element is actually equal to 31, which is also equal to the uh, array of high and array of low. In this case, we can say that the target is really equal to that number. We can now see that the target is equal to the middle element. That means the target can be found at index number 9, and the search is done because we can really find out our target from our given array. Let's see another example that involves finding out 19 from the given array. And of course, the numbers are already sorted. We can check that the first element is actually 3, which is smaller than or equal to the target. And the final element of the array, which is uh, 45, is actually larger than or equal to the target. That means the target is likely to be in the array because the numbers in the array are already sorted. And we start with i equals 0. Array of 2 to the power of i is actually equal to array of 1, which is 3. And the second element to consider is the element with index 2 to the power of i plus 1 minus 1. That means we can still get 1 for given i equals 0. That means the element is still 3. And in this case, the left-hand element of the window is 3, which is smaller than the target, and the right-hand element, which is just the same element, having a value of 3, is still smaller than the target. That means we have to increment i to find out another interval. Now we choose i equals 1. How about the case now? When i equals 1, we have to find out the second element, which is equal to 5. Also, we can find out the third element, which is equal to 9. And we see that both numbers are actually smaller than our target. That means this particular portion isn't able to contain our target. That means we have to increment i to find out another interval. Now we choose i equals 2. When i equals 2, the first element to consider is the fourth element, which is 11. The next element to consider is the seventh element, which is equal to 22. And we can see that the left-hand element is smaller than the target, and at the same time, the right-hand element is larger than the target. 
So we are able to determine the interval, and we can do the binary search on that particular interval to find out 19, because we are pretty sure that the target should lie inside that interval. Now we focus on the binary search on these four numbers. Of course, we have to find out the high index and the low index. The low index is 4, and the high index is 7. Since we know that the low index is smaller than or equal to the high index, we can find out the mid-index by using the formula. And we find that the mid-index is just 5, which corresponds to the value of 12. Now the element with mid-index is 12, which is actually smaller than our target. That means we have to choose the second half of the uh, array to continue the binary search. How can we determine the right-hand part? We have to update the low index to mid plus 1. Now the low index becomes 6. Now the low index is still smaller than or equal to the high index. We can still use the formula to find out the mid index, which is equal to 6. So the mid index is actually equal to the low index for now. The mid index corresponds to a value of 17, which is still smaller than our target. That means we have to choose the second half of the remaining portion of our array. How can I choose the right-hand part? Okay, I can just update the low index to mid plus 1. So now the low index is 7. Now since the low index is still smaller than or equal to the high index, I can still find out the mid index as follows, which is equal to 7. So now we have all three indices corresponding to index 7. And the middle element is 22. But our target is still smaller than our middle element. That means we have to choose the first half of our elements. How can we choose the uh, left-hand part? I can update the high index to mid minus 1. So now the high index becomes 6. But now we can see that the low index is larger than the high index. The low index is 7, while the high index is 6. In this case, we can be sure that the target doesn't exist in our given numbers. Then we can say that the search has to stop, and the target cannot be found from these numbers. That means number 19 is not present in our given numbers. Thank you for walking through the algorithm with me. If you have any questions about my video, please leave your questions at the comment section below the video. If you like this video, please give me a like and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.